everyone, welcome to Connected. My name is Fabiana Spinoza and I every Tuesday use this space to celebrate people's projects, talents, ideas and hard work. People then can be anywhere on the planet. I am in Santa Cruz, Bolivia, South America. Remember that you can see us through the Abby Ayala channel or if you're not in Bolivia, you can also follow us through Facebook, Twitter and later on when the show is over on our YouTube channel. Today's topic revolves the idea that we are definitely living in the future. There are some things, like science for example, that can really make our minds explode. It does mine for sure, every time. Several companies have dedicated their work to develop alternative materials in order to stop animal consumption, especially in the fashion industry. Many companies around the world are working intensely to come up with unconventional resources to use on their creations. Today we speak with Susanna Gombajova. She is the co-founder of Malai Materials, a company that designs and develops bio-based materials from bacterial cellulose that they grow on coconut water. All their materials are 100% animal-free and biodegradable. We will connect with Susanna Gombasova, who is in Kerala, India. Before we learn about Susanna's work, let's meet her. Susanna Gombasova was born and raised in Slovakia. She studied fashion and textile design in Czech Republic and later continued in Istanbul, Turkey, where she worked as a fashion designer for two years. In 2012, she moved to London where she enrolled at MA Material Futures course at the Central St. Martin's College of Arts and Design, graduating with the project The Invisible Resources, that studied the potential of living materials for making processes. Her project was recognized by international media and exhibited at the London Design Week, Milan Design Week, among others. In 2015, she moved to Mumbai, India, to work on a material research project conducted for one of India's major manufacturing conglomerated. During working on his project, she met her current business partner, Susmit, whom she decided to continue her research in bacterial cellulose with. Together, they founded Malai Biomaterials, a material research and development company focusing on sustainable biocomposite materials. She is currently based between Kerala and Slovakia. It is my pleasure today to introduce Susanna Gomboshova. She is, has been kind enough to accept this interview and she's talking to us all the way from Kerala in India. Susanna, thank you so much for accepting and taking the time to do this. I am a fan of you guys' work and everything that you have accomplished so far. Welcome to Connected and let's go with the first question. Susanna, you studied uh, textile design. Tell us, how did your life lead you towards the path of alternative materials? Uh, first of all, thank you for your nice introduction. It's a pleasure for me to be here and um, tell you a little more about our work. Not just my work, it's work of a lot of people. Uh, yes, so I'm a textile and apparel designer by training and uh, as part of you know what I uh, would do would be interacting with materials uh, in everyday life, you know, you're always touching surfaces, you are designing how certain materials will come together and look together and what shapes do they make, so naturally uh, as such you think about materials a lot, therefore uh, you know, my curiosity towards studying materials as such, alternative materials alike, was uh, very natural and comes from the practice. You right now work on Malai materials, correct? And you have developed mm -hmm. with your group of people 
all the everybody. I don't want to leave anybody out. But I know that you guys worked and developed this type of materials that comes out from certain process with coconuts. Can you explain mm -hmm. to us, please, how does it work? Of course. Uh, so we work with uh, a natural compound, which is called the bacterial cellulose. And it is a form of cellulose uh, produced by a certain type of bacteria uh, that uh, changes probably the carbohydrate in the nutrient into nano cellulose fibers. It sounds a little complicated, but basically it's a very natural process uh, where bacteria produce matter for us. Uh, and it comes with, with a very interesting properties. And the ideal medium for growing this uh, natural compound is water from mature coconuts. There are many media that you can use for growing it, but in uh, let's say, tropical countries it grows particularly well on the coconut. Uh, and this water is actually often um, a waste product or underutilized basically product of coconut processing uh, industry. So, um, you know, every day in every coconut processing uh, unit, they can dispose of you know, 4,000 liters of this water or 30,000 liters of this water, which gives you potential to grow a lot of this uh, bacterial cellulose. Tell me, you started my life materials not too long ago. It's like a, it's kind of a new company, but how long before you decided to launch Malai materials, you started to work on developing this process of making um, these materials out of coconut. Yeah. Um, so I started working with bacterial cellulose around 2013 when it was uh, you know, getting explored by scientists and designers. So there have been works of Susan Lee and uh, Janice Hülsen and Stefan Swabe and all of them uh, explored basically this uh, unique process, fermentation process in different ways. Uh, and I saw it as like very, um, you know, emerging material with a great potential for, for makers, for people who, you know, uh, make things maybe in slightly different ways. So I started thinking like, okay, if you have a living organism, you know, then how do you work with it? How do you craft it? How do you have more control over this process? Um, and then in, after coming to India, you know, I uh, was kind of keen on continuing the research and I was lucky enough to uh, meet my partner, uh, Susmit, who had uh, shared the same you know, interest and um, curiosity. So we started exploring the potential further and um, eventually it led us to uh, creation of Malai, which, you know, people often call uh, coconut leather. What are the biggest challenges for Malai materials, as well as the biggest gratification so far in this, like, couple of years that you guys been working now as a company? Yes, we have witnessed many challenges and then also many gratifications, so there's a good balance, I would say. Mm -hmm. The main challenges were, you know, Define what we want to do, how we want to work, you know, who we want to work with, and finding all these connections in order to, you know, do what we want to do. Um, you know, we had to learn how to talk about what we do uh, to all sorts of audiences. Uh, we had to, you know, source funding and uh, into all aspects of business and development as well. You know, except of being. Uh, um, researchers, you know, and, and makers. So the challenges were definitely many. Gratifications, I would say, the overall, you know, curiosity of people to get to know new material, to appreciate it, to be creative with it, uh, the willingness to adopt something, you know, uh, we believe is better for for many reasons. How long ago you guys decide you guys founded or launched the uh, Malai materials? I think we uh, officially kind of launched it only like towards the beginning of 2018. Before that, we were like you know um, 
still researching the material pretty much, but... Uh, Right, and I also have seen, because of course I did my little research, but I've seen that even though it's a short time, you guys received a couple of like recognitions and, and, and awards. Tell me about those things. How were those experiences? Yeah, I don't know if we received many awards, but we received some for which we are very grateful. So, um, yeah, the experience, you know, of course, it's nice, it feels nice when your work is appreciated by perhaps audience you never had before or, you know, people that whose work you respect, believe in you, so that definitely feels good. And the process is uh, different, you know, with different types of, I guess, awards and competitions, so some have good endings, some don't. And uh, Susanna, with how many people today you guys work? Like it started the both of you, but today how is it going and business-wise? I think we are still pretty small, you know. <laughs> so uh, we have a team of people, maybe slightly less than ten people. So yeah. Ooh. Right. How? Tell me about one day of work. Like let's say, let's talk about process. How does mm -hmm. it start and how long does it take? Like before then, since you get like the coconut as a fruit and it becomes this beautiful materials that we see. How is that? How does it take? How long does it take? Oof, okay. So you have a you know, coconut tree and that needs, no, I don't know how many exact years, definitely at least seven years of growth in order to give you the first coconuts. Oh, and the coconuts, you know, they are there all year round, so you can have, you know, I think up to four harvests, probably. Uh, and um, so you let the coconuts become mature. They generally mature coconut. You have to clean and break, and inside you will have, you know, you have like two halves, and they have white flesh inside the flesh right. is used for making coconut oil and desiccated coconut and coconut milk and then you have the shell that can be used for uh, um, you know, uh, charcoal or craft different kind of things biomass uh, and then you have the water inside so the water can be drunk it is nothing wrong with it but most of the people prefer they don't drink it because they drink it times i think it can be turned into vinegar so by introducing this specific bacteria into the water uh, with the other ingredients, you can then ferment the, your mat of, of bacterial cellulose, which you can then convert into many uh, you know, um, products, not only what we do, uh, which are materials you know for more consumer products, but you can use it for cosmetics, for face masks, for uh, uh, wound healing, um, Right. Patches, uh, you know, filters, different kinds of things. So uh, it has many uses, a lot of value added. Right. It's like the the fruit. It's a treasure, right? You can get so many things out of it. Um, yes, Susanna. It I cannot mm -hmm. wait to hear more about actually the products that you guys uh, have been able to work to produce with, with your materials. So we're going to go to a fast cut now. Please hold. People at home will be right back with the materials and to see the products that are made with Malai materials. Stay connected. We'll be back. Welcome back connected people and I am still in connection with Susanna who is talking to us all the way from Kerala in India. She is telling us all about um, her path uh, discovering and producing a leather, well it's well known as coconut leather but it is a process that she and her partner and all of her team work on some type of fermentation with coconut and they end up coming out with beautiful materials that have been used to make shoes, to make purses and other different uh, products. And this is exactly the moment that I was suspecting. Susanna, tell us about the, the, the products that have been made with Malai materials. What can we find on the market today? 
So I think today you will most likely find accessories um, like wallets, like maybe laptop um, cases, you know, um, uh, bags, maybe backpacks, uh, small accessories, maybe stationery. Um, you might find a few prototypes of shoes, uh, sandals, um, you might find some prototypes of furniture like chairs um, and maybe many other things we are not even aware of yet. Right. And then as Malai, you guys only make, like you guys give the material and you work in collaboration with other companies that actually produce the items or how does it work? Yeah, ideally it works like that. Of course, we would like to be involved in, you know, um, the whole process, you know, also uh, going into the design because we have the expertise in the material, of course. Um, so we always, you know, appreciate to come across collaborators uh, like these and we've been lucky to have few of them uh, and you know some people are mainly curious about the material because they are hands-on you know they like making some people uh, some people are looking for alternatives for leather for um, you know existing brands sometimes uh, they are completely new uh, many of them are vegan uh, initiatives you know people who search for um, non-animal uh, materials uh, sometimes there are bigger companies, you know, who are looking for materials to enrich their portfolio of sustainable materials, mm, different groups of people. I see. And tell us about the biodegradable part of, of the material. Let's say, because you know, sometimes we have so many labels. We see vegan, we see biodegradable, we see uh, organic, we see, you know. So when we yes. read biodegradable, what does it exactly mean? Well, biodegradable basically means that it will degrade in, uh, um, in soil compost conditions, you know, just with the aid of naturally occurring uh, microbiome. Um, so there are different standards for it, I'm sure. I think within European countries it should degrade in compost within 90 days. Um, but you know, many, many things, I think, strange branding also for the purposes of simply marketing these things. So seeing it on materials maybe that are not exactly biodegradable. Maybe just some of their part is biodegradable, but the other one is not. So it, it can be very tricky, of course. Right. So let's say if I find, if I happen to get my, a purse or a wallet made with Malai materials and I use it for 10 years and it's just, it can't be used anymore. What do I do with it? Like technically? Technically, okay, so it, if it has any like metallic parts, you know, like rivets or zipper or something like that, you should remove it because um, you know, that can be perhaps recycled instead. Uh, instead, uh, the Malay parts, you know, the if there's any lining, it can be made from, you know, co uh, complementary fabric. So that you can all put in a compost uh, with your vegetable peels and, and stuff like that. Uh, you can potentially also recycle it into paper products. I love to hear this. I really love it. Susanna, I, I, I am a fan of you guys' work. <laughs> and yes, it's so much information and it's so refreshing to, to hear and to know that there are people out there that are like studying and improving and making th just, you know, to give you an option to just, I don't know, have a habit and make things better in a good way. Uh, thank mm. you so much for being in the interview. And also, I want to give you space so you can share your social media information with everybody and they can follow you and see the amazing work that you guys do. Go ahead, please. Well, thank you very much. It's been lovely to talk to you. And I hope uh, your audience finds it interesting. Um, and uh, we have social media, of course. 
we have an Instagram account which is about dot Malai. Uh, uh, we have a Facebook page which is Malai Biomaterials, uh, and uh, you know you can also view our website uh, which is uh, made hyphen from hyphen Malai.com. Thank you, Susanna. A big kiss mwah, all the way to <laughs> India, to you <laughs> and to all your team. And uh, always be well. And until next time, bye. Thank yeah. you. Bye bye. Good evening. I think that the word alternative is so important nowadays. It is very easy to believe that there is only one way to do things or to believe that things don't need to evolve. To change. There is a reason why so many people are working, researching, testing, searching for ways to do less or zero harm to the environment. Climate issue is a fact and it is a reality everywhere in the world. Do what you can to help. If you are into fashion, make sure to learn a way to look good and feel good with the products you buy at the same time. I will come back in a week with a new topic and a new friend. Nominate a person you love, you admire, or somebody you would like to support by writing me an email to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. Let's get in touch and let the world know about that. Stay connected and until next time with me, goodbye!